All right, Craig, here we are in your real-time, special relativistic world. Tell us about where we're at. Well, this is an interactive game-like uh, simulation, unlike the videos that we had before. Uh, Anthony Searle also was involved in creating this, but another undergraduate student, Lachlan McCalman, also contributed enormously to the development of this software. So what we've got here is a little bit more complex world than the one we saw before where we just had a building and a sign with there's all sorts of things here but what you can see at the moment is some trees and, and a road and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to accelerate with constant proper acceleration down that road and we'll see what we see. So here we go. If you look very carefully you should be able to see the speed in orange at the top left of the screen. So we're accelerating so towards we're accelerating. those trees. Everything's moving away, and that's because those arrows are coming around, and despite uh, that moving forward, things look like we're moving back. But now we're going off, and we're actually coming up to the walls that's and things right. as yeah. we go through. Yeah. So eventually... So I just went through something there. So eventually, when we accelerate, although initially things look further away, eventually we catch up with things and they start appearing closer again. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So uh, one of the interesting things that we can do with this is we can look at, uh, uh, let's look at the trees. If we go through and accelerate here again. Yep, and I, I can do things like turn the Doppler effect on and off as well. So that's with the Doppler effect on. Oh, so that's not very interesting because everything just looks that's dark. That's right, yeah. And part of what happens is that we shift the infrared and ultraviolet into the picture okay. as well. So the trees look bent over. Again, that's the aberration, not just in the one dimension, but in the two dimensions. That's correct. All right. It's a bit hard to steer relativistically. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that uh, it would be very easy to hit a tree when everything is distorted. <laughs> That's right. Now, uh, Craig, my understanding is that you have also uh, some other worlds. That's right. Uh, for example, one that has, for example, a bunch of cubes where that's, we can get a yes, sense of what things look like. fascinating, yes. So I call it the cube lattice. And what I'll do is give you a perspective on that just by pausing but giving us a high velocity. So this is a freeze frame at high velocity. And because I'm traveling at high velocity, the image has, or the world has collapsed up in front of me, so I can see a, a lot of it now. Which so we I can really see, see, because this yeah. is really, if we were going no speed at all, we would have just this big set of cubes that was perfectly square. Yeah. And we really see what the aberration looks like. We take Correct. this big field of view and we collapse it down and we end up with this bulging thing in the middle and uh, sort of almost a pin cushion. So this is a lattice of hollow cubes. These cubes are hollow through all three axes. And what we're going to do when I unpause it is fly through the center one. So that's a wall of these hollow cubes. And behind it are actually two other walls. So we'll fly through this one and then through two more. Okay. So let me start that up and see what happens. So we're coming very quickly. Now, this is kind of akin to what Luke Skywalker did in the first Star Wars movie, uh, but it didn't look like this in the movie. He no, was going it's really, really hard fast to get through a hole. Whoops! <laughs> and trying to turn and go. get something into a little hole. Very hard. Looks really, really challenging. It is because everything is so distorted. And distortions change as you change your direction of relative motion. Right. All right. So. Uh, Craig, my understanding is that uh, people can download this. Uh, That's correct. People are taking the class. And yes. So we'll provide uh, the link so they can have their own little play. Sure. And you can try to experience uh, the relativistic world in real time yourself. So let's finish off with a trip across the solar system. Let's do that. All right, Craig, let's take a trip to Saturn let's do from that. the Earth. Okay. So, in the initial part of this movie, uh, we'll see the Doppler effect as we move away from Earth. So you can see that the blue oceans went green and the land masses went red, and also the background stars reddened somewhat due to the Doppler effect. So that's the Milky Way there that's, that's all right. been uh, turned into kind of a, a dull color. I'm colorblind, but yep. it looks kind of boring now. Okay. And here we're going to go by one of our sister ships. This that's is right. a, a little uh, solar sailor. It's a deploying solar sailor. its solar sail right now. 
All right, so this is the way that uh, presumably we're in something like this ourselves that we can speed up very quickly. Well, it, it's interesting how fast you might be able to go on a solar sailor. Probably not quite as fast as we're going in, in this simulation, but maybe a few hundredths the speed of light is, is a possibility. Oh, so we're speeding up towards it, which means it looks further away. That always gets me. Yeah, it's, it's very But eventually, the distance will catch up, and as we go through, we get incredibly weird distortions, and we're going to go, it looks like, right into the sun. That's right. Uh, well, okay. well, of course, the sun is out there in the sky, but it collapsed around into the front of us, so wherever now it was. we've had the entire sky wrapped around, and we're coming up on Saturn, which looks very distorted. Very strange. So... Traveling at 99% of the speed of light is going to help us get there quickly because that means that uh, you have all that length contraction from our perspective uh, yes, of the distance, yes, yes. which means the time's contracted. That's correct. So normally from the sun to Saturn, 83 minutes at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. But if we're traveling 99% of the speed of light, then that time is going to be reduced substantially from our point of view. That's right. Although from the sun... It looks like it still took us 83 and some extra bit of time. It's very strange, there. yes. All right, so uh, traveling uh, at the speed light, a very high speed is going to be uh, useful uh, to get there. But once you get there, uh, you're going to have to think about what you look at because Saturn's ring doesn't look flat anymore. It looks warped. Yeah, uh, the re reason that we stopped at Saturn and we're all doing some orbits around it at the moment is because spherical objects, strangely enough, stay looking spherical. So they're not very interesting. I'm getting kind of Whereas, seasick. Yeah, here. yeah. I think I want to go slower <laughs> when I visit Saturn myself. Uh, yes, yeah, so you probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to orbit it at that speed. All right, well, that should give people pause to think about uh, their trip to Saturn sometime in the distant future. Well, we're going to finish off with the finale of flying through the rings. We accelerate up, and of course, that makes Saturn move away, as we're familiar with now, but we're oh, going so to we're coming come through the rings. the speed of light. Very fast. And we're catching up, and as we go through, it does not look like a ring system at all, but still very interesting. And we can see the Milky Way, the entirety, which fills the whole sky, wrapped in to that tiny little part of the sky to the aberration. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Craig. That was a wonderful tour of the relativistic world and our solar system at nearly the speed of light. Thank, thank you very you. much.